This is what an entire campaign's worth of character minis looks like at my table. Spanning the course of over a hundred D&D sessions, these are the heroes, the villains, and the NPCs from my recently finished campaign. And today, we're taking a look. Hey everyone, Jacob here from Painted for Combat, and today we're looking at all of the character minis from my recently finished D&D campaign. The campaign started in Lost Minds of Fandelva, moved into Dragon of Ice Spire Peak, and then became fully homebrewed, in my group's own world of Marion. And stick around to the end. We have an overview of every hero's story from this campaign, narrated by the players themselves. First off, let's meet the heroes of this story. This is Tide, one of the very first minis that I ever painted. Took me something ridiculous like seven hours to paint this simple model, and he was my personal character starting out this campaign. This is before I took over DMing after the Lost Minds of Fandelva, around level seven. Tide was a water Janazi druid who had a prosthetic arm made of living vines. Next up is Ari, a merfolk ranger. This was Ari's first miniature, and it was painted by Ripley, who actually played Ari in our campaign. Later in the campaign, at around level 10, we did a refresh of the minis. At this time, Ari had a new bow, the Eyes of the Eagle and Dragon Mail armor, which was fun to add to the model. And by this point, Ari was also a multi-class cleric. And it's worth noting that all of my players design their own characters in Heroforge. This gives them so much more agency when it comes to making the characters look the way that they want rather than me trying to get it right by myself. Then we have Dana, a half drow rogue. And again, Dana's first mini was painted by her player, Amy. And Dana also got a refresh around level 10, when she became a multi-class warlock to Tiamat. She had a flame tongue rapier, which ended up being her packed weapon and was upgraded due to that pact throughout the campaign. Finally is Bjorn, a Viking barbarian who had Goliath blood, but just looked like an overly tall human. And he had a few minis throughout the campaign. The first was a more traditional Viking attire, but as the campaign progressed, he became a champion of Zaton, one of our homebrew gods, who was pretty much Odin from Norse mythology, playing into the Viking aesthetic that Bjorn had. And then, eventually later in the campaign, Bjorn ascended to godhood, donning a very similar aesthetic to Odin, with spear and cape. And again, stay tuned. At the end of the video, the players themselves are going to give a narrative overview of each of their characters, after we've looked at all of the other models. But before we do that, I have a super important announcement. My players and I have been working really hard and we're super excited to announce that we're actually going to be recording our next D&D campaign. And it's going to be posted on our brand new YouTube channel, Roll for Adventure. So if you want to see our next story unfold or you just want to see how I actually use the minis from this channel, jump over there right now. You can watch a meet the group video as well as our very first episode of the campaign, which are both live right now. And again, that's Roll for Adventure. Anywhere down below in the top of the description of the pinned comment, just look for the blue dice with the big four. Next up, we have some of D&D's starting adventure big bads. Beginning with Glassstaff from the Lost Mines of Fandelva. For Glassstaff's mini, I 3D printed a mage and used an offcut of some transparent filament that I chopped up to create his iconic glass staff. Then there's the Black Spider, a drow mage who was actually the boss fight where my character Tide departed from the party. Another mini from Lost Mines is Halia, who became a pretty important NPC to our story later on once it transitioned to pure homebrew. Now, let's move on to some of the campaign's proper villains. Elena Colthard, as she introduced herself, was a mercenary that was hired by nobility to guard their caravans and airships, but turned out to actually be Caitlin Valdrace, the antagonist and BBEG of the campaign. Caitlin ran a cult known as the Stormcallers, who were trying to summon the Tempest Lord. And for anyone that knows D&D Gods, the Tempest Lord was our version of Talos. Then Caitlin had her right hand man, the Shield, a Goliath Paladin who was something of a rival and a source of trauma from Bjorn's backstory. The Shield wiped out most of Bjorn's comrades in a bloodbath of a fight, which is what eventually led to Bjorn traveling as an adventurer. Then we have Caitlin's left hand girl, for lack of a better term. The Huntress, a masked figure who was entirely mute and couldn't speak but was something of a tracker and an infiltrator for the villains. Huntress was eventually killed in combat by the party, before they unmasked her and realized it was Ari's long lost sister, who had just been misguided by Caitlyn. Can't win them all, I guess. That was a, that was a heavy session. Then we have my second character, who came in for half a session before I took over DMing. This is Elbor Emberhide, a red dragonborn paladin, who knew Bjorn and traveled with the party briefly. Elbor claimed to hold on to his Viking ways, but later in the story when he re-emerged as an NPC, it was revealed that he had turned to worshipping Tiamat, 
after being discriminated against and learning the truth of his kind. He challenged Dana due to her contract where he died, trying to take Dana's pact weapon and forge a contract of his own. Now we can take a look at a few of the important NPCs, such as Erak, the Beastmaster, a half-ogre who ran tournaments in the desert city of Nepta. He owned a giant coliseum where he contained and controlled various creatures, from giants to odiogs, and this compound was raided by the Stormcallers during the campaign. Speaking of which, if you want to see the creatures and the monsters from this campaign, and boy there's a few on the shelf behind me, let me know. I'd be happy to do a follow up video showing off some of the larger and more monstrous models from the campaign. Next up is a rival party of adventurers for our heroes. This is the Stonehide Troop, named for their grayscale skin tones across their party. We have Damacus, the Tiefling Ranger, Cinder, the Fire Genazi Barbarian, and Baruta, the Black Dragonborn Rogue. These guys popped up a few times during the campaign at various levels as reoccurring characters that the party grew to know. Then we have the Azutane Council, a group of spellcasters who maintain the magics in the nation of Elzar. This council consisted of four once adventurers, Elissa Dawnstrider, a human wizarding mage, a Vira Sunflare, a human cleric, Kylan Stoneheart, a dwarven artificer, and Nalani, a wood elf druid. These four were allies to our heroes, and due to the party's actions, these individuals might become quite important to the continued lore in Marion. Then we also have Karsten, a paranoid PTSD survivor of a dragon attack, who became an inventor and created a large pilotable steam mech, who the party took on a couple of fights and eventually introduced to Kylan, to see if the two couldn't introduce automatons to our homebrew world. A small plot point that might be very important to our upcoming campaign. Moving back to some antagonists, we have Mortis Telgan, an Asimar who was created with the last of the divine power of the Death Mother, the Raven Queen, when she was sealed away. And he has been doing his duty ever since. As her champion, Mortis had been working towards a prophecy that would free the Queens of Darkness, a trio of evil goddesses, Tiamat, Lolf, and the Raven Queen. But he wasn't working alone. Draven Arganath, the champion of Lolth, who was also a part of this dark prophecy. Alongside his house's matron mother, Zazima Arganath, who eventually brought Dana into their midst as she was the last piece of their puzzle, being that she was becoming the champion of Tiamat. And finally we have the final boss of our campaign, a being that Caitlin released, believing that she needed his strength to free the Tempest Lord. This is Tarzul a fallen angel of order and balance, who was once the commander of the Tempest Lord's armies in ancient wars that are long past. But when Tarzul was freed, he had no desire to set free the Tempest Lord, and instead sided with the shield, the two of whom now wished to remove these new gods from power, killing them and taking the divinity for themselves, seizing the power that comes with holding a domain of creation. In these efforts, the party intersected Tarzul and the shield, and during this fight they enlisted the help of Lion, the first Goliath, Marion's version of Thor. Lion was the god that currently held the Tempest Lord's domain, although a little unstable. As well as Lion, the party fought alongside Sigrun, the leader of the Valkyries, a group of powerful celestial warriors who had history with Tarzul. And that's pretty much all of the characters that got minis from my last D&D campaign. Again, there's a bunch more monsters and creatures on the shelf behind me, and if you'd like to see those, subscribe, like, and let me know. We might do a follow-up video in the future. But most importantly, please consider checking out Roll for Adventure, even if you just jump over and take a look. We're really excited to tell a brand new story in the world of Marion, and we're super, super excited that we get to share it with you on YouTube. So please consider jumping over there, subscribing, checking it out to see our new story unfold in the world of Marion. Bjorn Ironside, a Viking barbarian who left his lands to find new ways of life, and became a chosen of Zartan, the Allfather, God of Knowledge. Through adventures, he proved his strength to himself and the gods, by helping defend their divine home, settling old scores, and sealing away ancient threats. Deeds that led to his ascension to godhood, as Bjorn, the ascended god of battle and fury, Dana Kusha is a half-drow rogue who left her small village in search of a way to provide for her home, pulled into a party who led her to use her strengths as an adventurer. 
Through their journey, Dana found herself bound by contract to the Queen of Dragons, in the hopes of finding the truth of why Drow were all but extinct on the face of Merion. After encountering others, she used her contract to open a rift to the sealed plains of the Underdark, where she faced off against her patron's ill intent, sealing them away while retaining her power and fulfilling her goal. Ari Myron, a Merfolk Ranger, driven away from her home and family, who had to learn survival all on her own. After picking up work, she found herself thrown into a party, which led to her returning home and facing the curse which had befallen her people. In search for a cure, she took the teachings of Rhaenyra, the goddess of life and emotion. She furthered her abilities, aiding her friends and fighting alongside them, giving her the knowledge and strength to overcome the curse and to cure herself as well as her mother. These heroes fought against evils, both new and ancient, a cult devoted to summoning the forgotten Tempest Lord, who sought to usher in a new age of chaos. Led by Caitlin Valdrace and her companions, the Shield and the Huntress, this cult had the knowledge to break free a fallen angel, Tarzul, who was said to hold the key to freeing the Tempest Lord. Though his intentions were not so simple, instead he wanted to remove the gods from power and claim their immortal thrones as his own. Caitlin, foiled by Tarzul, fell in battle, the shield bested by Bjorn in a bout of vengeance, and Huntress, the misguided sister of Ari, who lost her life before she had the chance to reconcile. With their plans foiled, this created the events that led to Bjorn taking the remaining power of the Tempest Lord as his own, seating him among the Ascended Gods. In the wake of these events and the aftermath of this story, we pick up seven years later, a continent away, new characters, new stories, and new threats! We're really excited to share our new characters with you and with each other. And can't wait to create a new story in the world of Marion. Thank you so much for watching this video, and thank you even more if you consider checking out Roll for Adventure. And as always, have a good one.